good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and happy Friday the 13th. Yes, we have finally made it to this ever-anticipated weekend. Friday the 13th is upon us, guys, and I can't wait to show you what I have in store for our 8 p.m. Tropics talk tonight. But anyways, today's looking a little bit positive and a little bit more negative in both senses of the terminology. I will openly say that Mother Nature is not playing nicely right now, and it's not doing us any favors currently. I'm going to get into all the newest details, some looking more positive and more favorable for certain areas, others looking a little bit more doom and gloom, I will say, at the very least. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a great week, and I hope you're going to start the weekend off on a high note, not only tuning in for a new episode of Weather Center Nazario, but also with some very phenomenal plans now that all the severe weather in the southeast has come to an end. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting off on the National Hurricane Center homepage. We have Tropical Storm Sean that's holding on by a thread at this point. He's looking a very ragged mess on satellite imagery this afternoon, taking a real beating from the wind shear that's just been hitting him straight in the face for the last couple of days. Managed to re-strengthen about 24 hours ago, but now up to this point, he's going to continue to diminish. He's losing a lot of the thunderstorm activity associated with his center and should be nothing more than a remnant low over the next two to three days. Now we have Invest 94L, and I will open admit, especially since this is the beginning of the video, I blew the alarm on this storm because of all the consistency and all the trends I had not only observed over the last few days, but what the European model was indicating yesterday. Let me tell you right now, that has gone upside down, guys. In a positive way. Now, we have a lot less consistency with our models, but the Euro has completely backpedaled. It went from 0 to 100 yesterday, and I want to say as of this afternoon, it's gone down to a negative 10. Our other models are doing us no favors and not showing any sort of graciousness to us in terms of forecasting this feature as it moves forward in time. We are still anticipating development of it. As you can see, National Hurricane Center has put it at an 80% chance of development over the next seven days, and I do agree with this wholeheartedly. However, we're going to get into all the different discontinuities with that model data to concern Invest 94, and we're also going to take a look at what could be unfolding over the Southeast United States. As a 12 Zulu, you can see that we are still favoring a westward track right along that 10 degree north latitude line. This has been very, very consistent and all of our model platforms have been insistent of this over the last three to five days now. You can also see as far as our 12Z intensity guidance goes, the general consensus is this storm is going to strengthen. We have a few other model platforms keeping it below tropical depression or tropical storm status at this time. However, within the next two to three days, we are anticipating tropical storm Tammy is finally going to show herself. As we go even further in time at about day four, if not day five, at the most, a lot of our more deterministic models to include the H Wharf are anticipating this storm to become a hurricane as it approaches our lesser Antilles. Where it goes is the common common denominator at this point. Intensity, we're expecting to see strengthening. How much of it is still up in the air. In terms of its track, that has kind of gone out the window today. So we're looking at 12Z Euro right now. This is the afternoon update of the European model today. And in comparison to what we saw yesterday, it is as much of a night and day difference as you could possibly express in terms of are the difference between 12Z yesterday and 12 Zulu today. You go through time and you can see our Invest 94 out there in the main development region moving off to the west. And if you look at the chart on the right hand side we do see an increase in the surface winds associated with this feature but as it pushes into our lesser Antilles the euro has officially lost all confidence that we're going to get any sort of an entity out of this outside of maybe an organized disturbance or maybe a very low end tropical storm before it moves into the Caribbean and gets absorbed by this rapidly deepening low over the mid-Atlantic states you can see on the left hand side the model is actually calling for a 993 millibar low to form right over top the Carolinas and begin to create a lot of active weather for much of the southeast moving all the way into the northeast as it continues off that track and begins to work its way to the north alongside the polar front jet that's really digging down across the southeast United States. Good news, at least in the current time, bad news for those of us in the United States because I am anticipating this is going to bring about another huge round of severe weather for a lot of us, not only Florida, but also extending into the remainder of the southeast U.S. and the mid-Atlantic states for that matter and further north as this continues to evict off to the north-northeast following following that polar front jet that helped to induce the development. Now, on either side, I have 12Z today, Friday the 13th on the left, and then I have 12 Zulu yesterday when we had that Cat 4, Cat 5 indicated by the European model. It goes to show that even the Euro has a little bit of GFS built into it sometimes. Maybe it wanted to express itself and get a little bit more attention as opposed to what the GFS has been indicating for the last couple weeks. Anyways, isms on the side. What we're going to talk about is how we've seen such a huge shift in the pattern over North America, and if you've been watching the last 
last few segments of mine, I've been openly expressing how what happens over North America is going to directly affect what happens in the Atlantic. On the left-hand side, you can see that we have that trough digging in across the southeast as we go into next week and the end of the week next week. And as a result, what's happening is with that subtropical jet that really helped to develop a lot of the severe weather we saw over the last two days, that jet is going to have to disperse. With that intense polar front jet coming in from the north, that negative 17 degree isotherm associated with all of our polar air out of the Canadian provinces is essentially going to try to put a dam right in front of that subtropical jet. And the subtropical jet, believe it or not, has no temperature contrast associated with it. Forgive me for getting too sciency for you guys watching this video, but in essence, the STJ, the subtropical jet, is simply induced by the rotation of the Earth and what is called the conservation of angular momentum. And as such, because we have this powerful feature coming out of the north, that trough axis supported by our polar front jet, which actually is the delineation between polar air and the subtropical air over the deep south equatorial region, that's what's going to help to disperse this jet and create a large area of split flow. And it looks like today, if you look out over the Caribbean, the euro is indicating this split flow and really increasing the amount of shear we have across the Caribbean into the western main development region for an extended period of time. Whereas if you look on the right hand side, what we saw yesterday as that system begins to deepen, that subtropical jet really quickly gets its act together once more and begins to ridge to the north, allowing for that split flow to halt and the shear to come to an end as that system deepens and moves over the Lesser Antilles. You can see a very good anti-cyclone indicated right over top with that very, very sharp amplitude ridge surging into eastern Canada and the northeast United States. Very big difference, a good difference for those of you watching out there in the Lesser Antilles, but as I mentioned, our models are kind of all over the place. The Canadian model did not help us whatsoever. It is still showing a trend of strengthening as we go forward in time and then pushing right through the Caribbean islands. You can see as we approach the middle parts of next week into the weekend, we are already seeing what looks to be a high-end tropical storm, if not a low-end hurricane, moving right through the leeward, windward islands and continuing to strengthen as it goes through the Caribbean, starts to impact the Puerto Rico area, as well as Dominican Republic, potentially making landfall in the eastern periphery of the DR before getting picked up by that major frontal system expected to impact the eastern parts of CONUS. So again, now we have two different models, two fairly reliable models, the Euro being the more reputable of the two, showing two very different scenarios, and it gets even better, guys. On the left-hand side, I have our German model, the Icon, which is very good with spinning these systems up and did fairly well with some of our more intense systems earlier this hurricane season. And on the right-hand side, because they're almost a mirror representation of one another, I have the Korean model for 12Z. Spoiler alert, I already had the panel up there towards the back end of the run, but as you can see, both our Icon and KMA models are indicating that 94L is going to rapidly intensify in the main development region, becoming a hurricane towards the tail end of both of these model runs. But as we know, with stronger systems, once that inertia and Coriolis effect come into this, they want to move more poleward. And both of these models are indicating that the high pressure to its north is not going to be strong enough with that trough axis coming off a of conus right now, at this point in the run anyways, to keep this system down in the lower latitudes. So you can see as we get towards the very tail end of both of these model runs, we do have something very strong headed towards our leeward islands, but missing them by maybe 100 miles, give or take, to the northeast and sending it off into the Atlantic to hopefully pose no further threat to any landmass, even Bermuda for that matter, as it ricochets out into the central Atlantic as that system really gets going into what looks to be a nor'easter on the Korean model. So, you know, yesterday we had all the models lining up. We did have the Euro going completely intense in terms of wanting to develop a very major hurricane. And maybe I'm eating my words at this point because of the huge shift we saw going back to the under end of the spectrum. But at this point, it looks like all of our model platforms to include the GFS. I can't leave the global forecast system out of the equation. GFS has a totally different depiction from everything we're seeing here. So I'm just going to not bring that up once again. We are going to use it later in this segment. But right now, Every single one of our platforms outside of the KMA and the ICON are doing something totally different with this system. So as I mentioned yesterday, we have to continue to watch the dynamics that go on over North America, what our two jets continue to do, not only the polar front, but the subtropical jet. And we really need to start paying attention to what the Western Caribbean and the East Pacific look like. We're going to get into that right now. All right, folks. So as I mentioned, we are going to utilize the GFS just a little bit. I notice it tends to do a lot better over inland areas in terms of the synoptic scale features we see develop over the United States, Canada, and other locations for that matter. And the reason we're looking at the United States and we've shifted gears out of the tropics is because I do think between October 20th and the 22nd of this month, we're going to see another round of very hellacious weather for not only the southeast, but extending
opening up the eastern seaboard as that future potential nor'easter system really gets going. As you go through time, you can see the first trough indicative of the surface front that's coming across the U.S. right now, supporting what we saw in terms of severe weather over the Great Plains yesterday, making its way off the eastern coastline. No further harm expected there, but here comes that second cold pocket, and there's a lot of things I want you to pay close attention to on just these two charts alone. First and foremost, obviously we have that long wave trough digging in, but take a look at how we have an upper level feature, a nice cold pocket that breaks away from the main flow of the polar front jet to the north and really nestles its way into the southeast quadrant of the U.S. In response to that, you can see how much cold air we have sweeping across the Gulf Coast. On the same caveat, look at what's happening over Florida, parts of Georgia, South Carolina, surging into North Carolina at this point. We have a stark contrast, not only in temperature, which I showed you yesterday, but these are actually dew point temperatures I'm showing you on the right-hand side. You can see anywhere between 70 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit in terms of the dew point temps in the Florida Peninsula, extending further north into Georgia, whereas we have very, very dry dew point temperatures over Louisiana and Mississippi. And the reason I bring this up is we have the temperature discontinuity, the sharp contrast between cold, fresh polar air and very good maritime tropical air. On top of that, if we have very moist conditions in terms of our dew point and our relative humidity, that will definitely help to favor more severe weather, not only tornadic activity, but the possibility of strong convective winds with these updrafts, as well as the potential for frequent cloud to ground lightning, and of course, you know, hail. As you go towards the tail end of this run, you can see a large area of positive vorticity associated with that cold pocket working its way east through the mid-Atlantic states, impacting the Carolinas entirely. And also on the right-hand side, even though it's dew point temps, you can see where that potent frontal system makes its way across the Gulf of Mexico through Florida and continues up to the north, trying to reform again with the polar front jet as it continues to deepen down and strengthen into a nor'easter system for much of the northeast coast. We also have a secondary cold pocket that's expected to come in along the southwest U.S., so we're going to have to pay close attention to what happens with that as those two areas form what's called a Rex block type of scenario where you have cold air entrenched underneath a mid or sharp amplitude ridge. It's another variation of what's called a blocking pattern to where it slows down all of our upper level jet flow, all of our upper level large scale weather features, and for all intents and purposes creates chaos for the average analyst and forecaster because the models struggle so bad with these systems. All right, on the left we have our Euro and on the right hand side we have the GFS just for confirmation that as you go forward and we move into that time frame of October 20th through the 22nd, you can see both models are indicating we're going to see some sort of development over the deep south and southeast, really upping the severe weather and overall rain chances for much of the southeast U.S. spreading into the Appalachians and mid-Atlantic states. Both models show something very similar, although at the 12Z data today for the Euro, we're actually seeing cyclogenesis off the Florida coastline. So we could almost see another variation of what we saw with Ophelia deepening and impacting the Carolinas. We'll have to watch how this unfolds because some of the ensemble members want to develop this low to our south before moving into the Florida Peninsula, in which case that could actually be more tropical than it is sub or non-tropical. So we have a very potent atmospheric development going on over the southeast and in the Atlantic for that matter. And both of these systems are going to play a direct role in what happens with the other. Last but certainly not least, we're back to the GFS and I wanted to show you exactly why it is I'm more concerned we're going to have another severe weather event across the southeast. As that trough begins to deepen down, we're looking at our 850 millibar flow. So this is about five to 7,000 feet off ground level. If you guys remember, as we went through our severe weather event over the last two days, it was actually the low level jet and that warm sector, or that warm push of tropical air in the mid levels that really helped increase the amount of shear we saw over the Florida Peninsula, combined with our subtropical jet helping to shear our system in the Gulf of Mexico apart that really helped to intensify just how many rotational thunderstorms we had across the peninsula. Once that system makes its way far enough to the south, you can see our 850 millibar flow already beginning to increase across the Caribbean and through the Gulf of Mexico to where at this point in the run, October 21st, late in the evening, October 20th, when you do the difference between Zulu time or universal time and regular time, Eastern Standard Time, you can see as of October 20th, the night, Friday night, we're already seeing that low-level jet beginning to reshape itself, driving a lot of that warm tropical air out of the Caribbean, across the Florida Peninsula, into the Carolinas and Georgia for that matter, interacting directly with that polar cold pocket that's broken away from our upper-level jet. So this is looking pretty significant, guys. I'm definitely keeping my eyes on such a large AOR at this point that it's definitely draining, but both of these areas, to include the Caribbean likelihood of seeing an impact from Invest 94, as well as what could possibly come out of the Caribbean and what 
what's forming over the United States are all constantly on my radar. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to wrap up and conclude our Friday the 13th segment of Weather Center Nazario. Thank you very much for concluding your week with Weather Center this afternoon. I can't thank you enough for joining me, and I hope to see you tonight at our 8 p.m. Friday the 13th Tropics Talk, where we're going to talk about all this in depth and have a little bit of fun for Friday night. My heart, thoughts, and prayers go out to everybody out there who was affected by the severe weather event the last couple of days. I do sincerely apologize if there was anything I fell short of in terms of communicating the weather pattern. I know I tried my very best to get it across to every one of you out there watching, and hopefully going forward, we can continue to get this message out well in advance to protect each other and protect ourselves when severe weather is on the horizon. Until next time, folks, we'll see you later this evening for our Tropics Talk, but until then, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.